Hello everyone. There's something that's been brought to my attention recently. I'm really annoyed I didn't make a video on it sooner. I know I'm late to the party, but, but, this is an important thing. Anyone who watches me knows that I have autism, arthritis and a slew of other conditions and it annoys me to see people faking disorders for clout. Whether it be arthritis or autism or something else, these people act the way you expect a person with this condition to behave. As a person with autism, it's obvious to me that they're faking. I'm not going to say that people don't behave like this with these conditions. Some do. Hence the stereotype. People with autism do rock and sway and hum and flap their arms. This is called stimming as mentioned in my last video. But this is not a fun activity. It's not something we love doing to be quirky. It's our way of calming ourselves. Of letting the steam out if you will. Like a fully boiled kettle. You can see the steam and you know it's ready for tea. It's the same with people with conditions like us. Take change, for example, with me. One or two changes I can handle. Kinda. Not really. But after that, I need time to simmer. You can flick the switch again or add another change, but I'll still be hot and stressed from the last time. Like that kettle, I might technically be okay to boil again immediately, but I'm still hot from the last change and haven't had time to cool down or process it. The difference is, with the kettle, it won't hurt the kettle if you press it soon after making tea. But if you keep doing that with people who can't handle things like change, it becomes extremely overwhelming and a metaphorical power surge happens, therefore causing more than just stimming. Full-on panic attacks can happen. In kettle form, power surges happen and the kettle breaks, the lip breaks and you can't flick it anymore and you have to get a new kettle. Unless you add cold water to that kettle, you will still have a very hot kettle with hot boiled water. Unless you calm or allow to calm a person with these conditions, before adding more stress, they will explode. Sometimes hucks will help, but sometimes they won't. Sometimes just leaving them to simmer by themselves helps. So those are genuine people who are dealing with these conditions. Going back to the fakers. Why? It is not fashionable to be autistic or to have a neurological disorder. Autism is a communication disorder. My family loves me and I've lived with them all my life. And yet I still manage to get it wrong often. It's not fun going through your whole life not being able to understand people when you think you do. It's not funny being alive and thinking that you've said the right thing, or done the right thing, or pulled the right face, only to find that you gave the complete opposite impression and everyone wants to fight you. This is why, for me at least, it's easier being a hermit and an introvert. Then you if you keep to yourself, then you don't lose that many friends and you can't offend anyone. This is not something to joke about. If I could not offend everyone, I would avoid it because, as I already said in another video, I have misophonia. And we all know that when people are offended, they tend to get kinda loud. I'm nearly 30 years of age and I still do not understand half the things I think I do when it comes to communication. When you have people like me who have these actual conditions, because of all the fakers, no one is going to believe us. I mean, as I said before, I have autism. However, the amount of people who do not believe that I have it because I'm a girl or because I can talk is astounding. And also, that's not true regarding the last one. The way that people with autism are diagnosed is not being able to have spoken by the age of three. That doesn't mean we don't talk at all, it means that we don't talk up until the age of three. But I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if I didn't talk. Some grow up non-verbal, but that's not everyone. However, you would never know by the way that these people fake it. They take one stereotype, whether it be stimming or screaming or crying or doing something that would be considered childish, and take it to the extreme. 
and that's just autism. There are the common ones, DID, Tourette and ADHD. Look at the girl who recently got banned off TikTok because she was found out to be faking Tourette's. How humiliating must it be to have your own relatives call you out for being stupid on the internet? I don't even have Tourette's, but it's so obvious that she's planning what she's doing before she does it. Also, one thing that was found out was the fact that apparently she has Huntington's disease, and as we found out with the condition, you can't be diagnosed with Tourette's if you have Huntington's and vice versa, because they both have tics and similar symptoms, so it's going to be hard to differentiate. For example, one way to tell the difference between autism and Asperger's is does the child pile their stuff or do they spread their stuff everywhere? If they pile their stuff, they have autism. If they spread it everywhere, they have Asperger's. Ironically, I was a person who was diagnosed with autism who spreads her stuff everywhere. So not everything is black and white. I also talk more, but I'm also very introverted, so I'm on the verge of both. However, these people take one stereotype and run with it to the extreme. This needs to stop. Not to mention the people who claim to have multiple personalities or schizophrenia when they commit a crime. They claim that it wasn't them. It was the alien eight-legged freaks that were in their head telling them they had to do it. The other personality took over and made them do it and they were not aware of what happened. I mean, it's absolute tosh, but you know, we all know that you're just a greedy person who decides to steal and you're blaming it on another personality that you have no control over. In that case, whether you go to prison or the nut house, you still need to be off the streets. Unless it's not true, in which case say that and own up to the fact that you're just being an idiot. Some people consider some things about this cute and cool, but that's fine because they're not making fun. But for a person dealing with this condition, sometimes it's cool to be autistic or to have one of these conditions. And other times it is the most annoying thing ever. I have days when people find it cool. And then I have days when I'm thinking, I wish I didn't have autism. Having friends that you love, but you have offended them with your joke or you don't get theirs becomes boring after a while and maddening in the extreme. Oh, and I almost forgot. What about the girl, I've forgotten her name because she's just not important to me, who faked having cancer, brain cancer, to get sympathy. I just can't with these people anymore. And this is a very serious condition. I mean, it worked and she managed to get people to give her money because of her condition. But just like the girl faking Tourette's, she was called out by her sister and made to apologise because of what she did. I have only ever made one video about my arthritis and my autism and that's because me talking about it's not going to change it. I like to inform people so that when they meet someone who has arthritis or who has autism or who has misophonia, they know what to expect. I'm not trying to get money out of people so I can go to the rheumatoid clinic or because I need to spend it on a chandelier for my bedroom. This is the thing that annoys me with people who are big YouTubers who do this because they have a big following. They feel they can get away with it and no one is going to call them out. The only beings that should be allowed to get away with this are pets when they want more affection and they walk around pretending to limp and then forget which poor it was. But human beings should be ashamed of themselves when they do that. Also, because people have followings, people believe them. Look at the girl who faked brain cancer. I used to have chemotherapy for my arthritis. It is a very draining process. It was hardly anywhere near the dose that they used for cancer and I still felt dead afterwards. But this woman, she was rosy cheeked, she had her hair, she was healthy looking, but because she is famous, everyone believed her and no one questioned it until her sister exposed her to the world. Now she doesn't have a job, you know? Where's she going to go now? I tell you, my hair has never been the same since. This woman had no signs that she was going through it. At this point, I genuinely feel sorry for anyone like me who genuinely has these conditions. Because when people like me are trying to make a living online and we are trying to inform our fans, people won't listen. They'll think we're fake. I mean, I'm telling you everything now 
before getting monetized because I have nothing to lose. If I suddenly appeared with this disease after monetization, then people might be suspicious. But I have nothing to lose, so I'm just informing people without asking for sympathy. Also, my videos about autism, arthritis and misophonia didn't suddenly bring in millions and millions of viewers, so there's no point me doing it for that reason. Also, you don't have to believe anything I say, I'm just here to have fun and talk on the internet. I've also not put my disability in my name. I don't want to be known as the arthritic YouTuber or the autistic YouTuber or the YouTuber with misophonia. I want to be known as Trisha Smith. You can then make up your own opinion about me. One of the reasons why these people irritate me so much is that they just don't know when to stop. I mean, you shouldn't do it anyway, but sometimes people make jokes and other times people take it way too far. I don't think they're aware of how they affect people or maybe they do and they just don't care, but it's outrageous. What about that one YouTuber that's gonna come and he's gonna need help from his followers, but because of Miss Braindead, no one is going to trust him. It is beginning to drive me mad and it needs to stop. On the plus side, social media seems to be cracking down on them. Ones like YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube and the like seem to be getting rid of things like this from their platform and good on them. One of the things that I think these people forget is that conditions fluctuate. People like me who have arthritis might be very bad one day and not so bad the next. My misophonia is very bad on some days, especially when I'm stressed, and on other days it's not as bad and I may not even need to wear headphones all the time. If it stayed at the worst all the time, people would go insane. If my arthritis was at its worst all the time, I wouldn't be able to move and I certainly would not be able to make YouTube videos. If my hearing was at its most sensitive all the time, I definitely wouldn't. There are days when I can't even take hearing my own voice, so how would I record? Some days I have better energy than others. At my worst, all I can do is lie there and be a vegetable or a dead fish. But on good days, I can walk my dog or do things that require more energy, like talking and being around people. Regarding my misophonia, on good days I can hold a conversation with headphones in, on bad days I have to go to bed with a migraine. Arthritis wise, this is a bad day because of the rain. Oh, and by the way, I remember hearing about the doctor who said that arthritis is not affected by the weather or being wet. How did he know? Did he have arthritis? Obviously not. Or if he did, he was one alien piece of something because that is absolute nonsense. Or he's just really tough, but you can't say that rain doesn't affect joints because every single old person in existence will normally tell you that they can tell that the weather is changing. I mean, if I step out of doors, even a light shower is horrendous for my joints. Anyway, I had to talk about this because it really irritated me. These people are so stupid and I do not understand how they get away with it. Eventually they will be found out and surely they know this. The only reason they get away with it for so long is because they have an influence over people. Now, I don't consider myself an influencer. I'm just a girl who makes videos. But even if I do get to a point where I have one million subscribers, I'm still not going to lie to my followers, to my fans, or even to my haters. For me, it's just too much energy. Telling the truth requires so much less problem and it's quicker too. And if anyone doesn't understand or doesn't believe something I said and they want to know more, they can ask me and I'll happily tell them. I mean, I don't need people to believe me. It's not like they can pay for me to be wrapped in cabbage or gold until my arthritis goes away. I mean, if there are any millionaires out there watching this and they want to wrap me in gold until my arthritis goes away, hey, please let me know. The only gold I'm using is the one on my ring finger on my right hand, which you can see in the arthritis video thumbnail. That is the only part of my body that rarely gets any pain unless the weather is torturous. Ironically, my mum says I'm a very beautiful woman. However, I still don't think that I'm pretty enough to get away with pretending to have these conditions that I don't have. I'm still going to get roasted to death on the internet if I lie to people. 
please be careful out there and look out for the fakers. I'm a person that has so many conditions that if I were to tell you the full extent, you would think I was faking. And there's no need for that, as there's no way that it's going to benefit anyone if I tell everyone. As I've said before, I've mentioned the ones that I think will help people to understand. I mean, some YouTubers do genuinely have sicknesses on this platform. Look at Leukemia Lad. You know his problem without it being his main focus, and he is taking you on his journey with him so you can see that he is genuine. When fakers are called out, they make genuine people look bad. Also, they rarely have any consequences for their actions, so apart from being shunned off the internet, what punishment do they get? Do they go to prison for fraud? Do they have to give back the money to everyone that they stole it from? No, they just leave the internet and go about their lives. They probably buy a house or two and live out the rest of their days in peace. There's one final guy that I can think of. He pretended to be autistic for a few months on TikTok and then apparently, because of his conscience, he admitted to everyone after six months that he felt so bad about pretending to be autistic that he had to confess. Now, I don't even remember the guy's name because I didn't follow him in the first place, but it's really begun to annoy me how common this thing is on the internet. However, I am going to say, if you do know the identities of these people, please do not go and harass them. If they still have their accounts, although I know some of them don't, please don't go and harass these people. They obviously have something wrong with them to do this in the first place, and we mustn't distress them, you know? These poor basement dwelling losers have nothing better to do with their lives than to lie to people and have nothing better to do than sit in a basement and lie to people for a living. They are so addicted to clout that they don't know what to do with themselves. Poor things. Hopefully they'll get the help that they need. I mean, they irritate me, which is obvious, and it needs to stop. I think the more people who talk about this will help. I admire the people who have these conditions and speak up about them because they could be labelled as fakers. The only people who have disabilities that don't tend to get flack for it are people who have physical disabilities like having one leg shorter than the other or having only one leg for that matter. These people have an obvious disability because you can see them. Even leukemia lad, while it's not technically a visible disease, you can see he's honest, you can see he's not hiding anything from you, he's showing you everything going on with him so you can come with him and feel better and he's not asking for your sympathy. He states it as a fact and that's it. People want to donate to him and want to sympathise with him but they don't even need to because he's enjoying life despite everything. But these people who make it blatantly obvious that they're going to die in 10 days, they're probably lying. Well, you've got people out here going, I have brain cancer. Well, you definitely have something wrong with your brain and you're certainly a cancer. But who cares about that? You're getting clicks. That's the most important thing, right? Anyway, before I lose my voice talking about this anymore, this, in my opinion, is a very annoying trend that needs to end. But anyway, if you are a sensible human being who doesn't fake disorders to get clicks, money, donations and the like, then I am proud of you. You're handsome and you're beautiful and you, well, I'm speechless. I'll let you know next time I see you. Over to the pets. Hello all, this is Sylvie. If you liked what you saw, then subscribe for more. Hey everyone, my name's Bonjo. If you enjoyed yourself, then give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. Hi everybody, I'm Jack. And if you had fun, then comment down below and let my mum know. What's the weather like for you today?